So, hey, Bella, nice to see you. <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to install uh, like a thermostat, but you know, now that everything is like, before it was just like this mechanical thing where you'd push like one degree more, one degree less. And I've had these last, like since I moved here, it's just starting to be like strange temperature at whatever time of night. And then I thought I could just reset it and that I could, then it would, would be nice and function. But then, you know, you need an app and you need like a, a number, a registration, like it's the whole thing to, and, and Wi-Fi and all that. So that's what I was doing. And, you know, yeah. So I'm in the middle of like, and it's it's funny because what are we going to be able to do without the electricity or Wi-Fi? Nothing, you know? I don't know how the balance is in that. And it's kind of stressful too, to know, you know, here, especially here in Florida, if you don't have air conditioning, you can't really live. But it's, yeah, so that's what that's what's alive right now for me. That's why I was a little bit late. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Yeah, so, you know, what you're, when you're talking about that, the image that's coming to mind, um, I'm thinking of our temperature regulation in general and how our experience can be very, very similar to like being in a pressure cooker, especially during if we're in the summertime or if we're in a very, very densely populated city. Being in the energy of so many people or being in an enclosed space that holds all the humidity and holds all the heat it just like it pressurizes us until we we just you know we kind of either collapse or lose lose it all over the place from the stress of it all so hopefully your thermostat is uh helping to keep the the not too much pressure in your <laughs> <laughs> well, I was happy because suddenly it was Celsius and I've been missing Celsius for, for years. You know, it's always Fahrenheit here. So at least something good. <laughs> it's really easy to convert. You just multiply by nine fifths and add 32. No problem. Anytime. You can just whip it out. Just no, I'm kidding. That's I, I always like to challenge myself to try that, but it rarely works out the way I think it will. <laughs> So Bella, tell me about tell me about stress. Tell me about this movement of the sun through uh, gate fifty two, and kind of what's happening that you know when these solar energies are coming off the moon, they're reflecting and illuminating in us those lower frequency states because the the earth and the moon have this relationship of separation of self. So when we're looking at these shadow areas, what's going on with this particular gate? And um, why is it manifesting in your world as thermostat stress? <laughs> you know, there is something, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I saw you made my host. I'm going to share. There is something with, the sun in cancer right now and that being the 52 uh, and having to do with what I feel is stability because we have mountain over mountain in the I Ching and mountain feels like stable and grounded and you know um, that when there are so many parameters that have to work for you to even be able to set your home environment you know there is something with that that feels a bit destabilized thing that doesn't feel completely safe and cancer is about the home and it's about how safe you feel how nurtured you feel in that home so i, I do i do feel you know and the stress that's created when your home doesn't feel safe so in in that sense it feels connected what i see in the in the chart right now is that you know, we had quite a lot of planets in Cancer a little while ago. We had Venus and Mars coming through Cancer. You know, it was it was a lot of that energy, and now it's like the Sun is kind of here on on its own. And I feel like there are many other. You know, we have Mars in opposition to to Saturn in in square to Uranus. Like it feels like there is more a lot of those masculine energies that are pulling on us and they're asking us to be impulsive or they're asking us to react towards the you know whoever is above us whether it's like spiritual forces or the, it's like authorities there is i feel like there's a lot of impulsivity in the air mars and venus are going to 
meet very soon. Venus is faster. So she she's going every second, like every two, two and a half years, she she meets uh, again with Mars. And now it's going to happen in Leo. So it brings up things about self-love, about passion and, you know, Leo, Leo fire energies. So there is something where I, for me, it's important that right now with the, with the sun here, we don't forget that we have the moon, we have uh, Neptune, we have Jupiter in water signs. And it's still about, even if it can feel like tension and pulling on the outside and like, what's my passion and how do I kind of control you so I can have my passion or don't allow you control me, you know, and how can I, like more than that impulsivity, I feel like the moon right now is in the 63 and it's asking us, you know, how deep are you ready to inquire about your truth? And how, how, you know, close are you to kind of doubting yourself and throwing in the towel? Like the moon right now doesn't want us to do that. It wants us to know that our freedom, you know, also comes from this Pisces energy and that living our humanness, you know, in the, in that 36 as well, you know, there's, yeah, there can be turbulent time. We can feel victimized by things. We can have self doubts, but still what we are doing right now is to finding that inner restraint, that inner balance, that inner truth as well. And we, the sun and the earth right now, we are looking like, how can we serve ourselves in the collective? Because we have this in collective circuitry. How can we self us in the world to have more balance, more vitality? That's the 58, more satisfaction, more restraint you know where are we using this precious precious fuel that is our you know that is what we here we have life force in those centers our motors the, the root and the sacral so where are you focusing your energy where are you concentrating on are you climbing a mountain that isn't yours you know that's the saddest thing with the 52 and the 58 when they when they have that that's 52 has this enormous staying power but what is it serving you know is it serving something that is going to create more satisfaction more vitality more stillness you know in in itself and, and in the world or is it serving something that is conditioned by by something that's not nurturing because remember again we are we are here in this in this cancer energy so that's what comes up for me when i look at the chart right now it's it's always amazing to me the volumes of information that you can pack into literally a brief three minute snapshot survey of what's going on with this astrological chart and how if you follow each of these elements that that you've brought up in, in into this discussion, you could fill an entire volume of, of exploration into how experience functions through us. And the first thing that you brought up that I wanna definitely talk about is environment and how stress is related to this experience of stress that we have is related to the environment that we experience and the environment that we are creating. And then the other thing I wanna make sure that we touch on today is this aspect that we were talking about through the channel of the 52 to the nine. Um, and how we can bring our expression into service of others, service of other, um, and how that kind of plays into this whole evolutionary cycle that's going on. If, if you're following anybody who's talking about spiritual topics, one of the huge awarenesses that is rising and has been <clears throat> for some time now is service to self versus service to others. Oftentimes people recognize service to self as an embodiment of evil, of an embodiment of the darkness of, you know, this expression that is going against the evolutionary pace of humanity's destiny. Whereas service to others is moving that evolutionary pace forward organically and can be experienced as a step forward individually as well. So those two things I definitely want to talk about. And the first thing you were talking about, the environment in the home, and I love that, you know, with the sun in cancer, it's about the home. 
you're having this experience with your thermostat, which, um, you know, like of all the mundane things that we can explore solar transits and, and lunar illumination and spiritual evolution is like, well, what temperature is it in the house and how do we control that? And one of the ways this stress shadow appears in our lives is by reacting to our environment rather than being in a place of being able to create our environment. And one of the primary ways energetically that that manifests for human beings is through the aura field, the energetic field that surrounds our physical bodies. And whether you see that as a, 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 an electromagnetic field or you see it as more of a subtle energy field, it's producing a vibrational reality that is going to affect your experience of what is present with you. So that when you are in an environment that events are occurring, and these are events that might be uh, displeasing to you. Ooh, it's too cold, or ooh, it's too hot, or ooh, there's too many people, or ooh, I'm all by myself and feeling lonely. All of those experiences are reactions to the outer environment. And the field of our aura also has the possibility of transforming our experiences of those things. So that when the temperature is high, you may be able to transform that feeling into, ooh, my joints are feeling really flexible and I can move freely through with all of this extra heat. Or if it's cold, you might take that feeling, uh, a lot of people are getting into Wim Hof and taking ice baths. And you might be able to connect to this feeling of, wow, I feel super alive right now because it's so cold. Obviously, when we're talking about thermostats, if your thermostat's at 60 degrees and you're just hanging out there for hours on end, you know, you're going to get chilly. But <laughs> this idea of rather than reacting to the environment, creating a, a field around you that transforms your perception of the environment for you is kind of where I think some of this might be going. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like maybe even with a, with a, that opposition with Saturn and, and, and Mars, like I, that's the thing that has been irritating me the most, that there is no logical, for me, there is no logic when it goes and sets itself to like to 73 degrees and it says like, comfort calling like I haven't asked for comfort calling you know like that's the most that's what's been like something outside somebody who lived here before or the owner or whatever you know has said it to it but I don't like comfort calling what I don't like is to change at 5 30 in the morning when I'm sleeping because I can't do anything about it or when I'm in a call that it's two hours so there is something about that outside authority that's you know that in the home I think that cancer says I'm going to, I'm going to protect the baby, you know, because cancer is that love, the embrace, the, the mother, the embrace of the child. And it's going to, it's, it wants to have, you know, it wants to know that it's safe. It wants to know the parameters because it's all about that. And, you know, we know on, yeah, it's, that's the thing that cancer is like afraid of, of something coming and kind of creating a separation in between that, you know, home feeling. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I love that you mentioned that that way, because what's driving all of this experience of stress, that that sort of collective pressure that happens from being around other people is these deep subconscious fears that are manifesting in our experience. And what you're talking about right there is a perfect example of one of those forms of subconscious fear, which is separation from that which from our mother specifically, or from that which is nurturing, that which is safe, that which gives us a feeling of security and safety. That's a deep subconscious fear pattern that is carried at a collective level. And it's not something, it's not an experience that you can think 
your way out of. It's, it's not something that is about, you know, your mindset or the, the positive thinking going on in, in your head. You can go along with positive thinking thoughts for ages and ages until at some moment you enter into an environment that triggers that fear of the loss of security, right? And if that happens in your experience, it may sort of cause you to, from whatever frequency state you happen to, you have managed to get to with your positive thinking processes, you will tumble down into these reactive and repressive states like in the snap of, of, of your fingers, just like completely outside of your control because of that, the pervasiveness of how fear drives the systems of our bodies. So that's something that definitely when we're looking at addressing our energy systems from a healing perspective or from a frequency entrainment into higher frequency perspective, those are things that we want to be able to address. How can we, how can we acknowledge these aspects of ourselves that seem to be running like these programs in a thermostat that was programmed by somebody else? You know, we didn't come into the world creating a fear of separation from security. It just kind of happened in us. Like we got conditioned with a program. We want to be able to address those and open up our energy bodies so that we can interact with them without them taking control of our awareness and to have those then have an opportunity to be released from our system so that we can generate security in our own experience so that we can generate that feeling of home and carry it with us wherever we go. <laughs> so Bella, the other thing that, that I definitely, you mentioned the, the Mars and Venus relationship that I'm, I'm very interested in and would love to, to talk about, but the, the aspect of service to others and how this functions in our, both in our energy system as it's described here in human design and how can we how can we if if we're aware of the presence of subconscious fears that are kind of governing the patterns of our behavior our responses to the environment are kind of predetermined in some certain way how can how can we transform that through this idea of service to others? How does that work? Mm -hmm. So first I'm just gonna say it's good because it's not gonna be until July 13th that we have the conjunction in Leo, Venus and Mars in 19 degrees of Leo. So we will come back to that and it's going to be in Dinky 4, which is about understanding and forgiveness. So I think that's going to be huge. And it's going to have to do with the Venus work that we do in the Jinky. So I, I feel like, you know, that, that's going to be powerful. But we don't have to go into that today. What you are saying, what, what I thought when you were speaking about the 52 and the 58, like I'm seeing something. I'm looking a lot at the circuitry in the body graph. So we have three kinds of circuitry. The first is the individual circuitry that we're going to see in the middle pillar, that we are going to see in the middle of the channels that are like kind of on the in the middle when there are two, two channels on the sides, which is about your inner knowing. It's about you being unique in the world. It's about you thinking things nobody thought, saying things nobody said, you know, kind of um, catalyzing, mutating things. And, and it's it's individual. It needs to kind of be its own freak, but it's, there is also a genius in that freak. So that's the individual circuitry. And then we have the tribal circuitry. So if the individual circuitry is like me and my genius in a way, and I am empowered in myself so that I can inspire other people to be in, empowered. That's the individual. Then we have the tribal. It's like me and my tribe. So the people I know, my family, how can we be strong together like kind of against that tribe? How can we feel each other? So it's much about feeling 
about touch, about, you know, kind of like sitting around the table, eating together, all these tribal things that, that have to do with really like with touch and, and feeling the other. That is the other type of circuitry that we also have a lot around the ego and the emotions. Um, and then there is the, the third time type of, of circuitry, which is the collective. And the collective is all about sharing. It's like seeing what, seeing all the human experiences that are there and then using the 58 for example to kind of see what we are not satisfied with and be logical around it so we can walk into the future in a better way so it's looking at the collective looking at humanity looking at what we do right what we do wrong what are the consequences using a logical process in order to walk into a better future together and there is something where i'm seeing even in the collective circuitry, when we're looking at this 52, this nine, this 58, it's like when I speak about old leadership and new leadership, I feel like the fifth line leadership that we had for, have had for a very long time is about you know, telling people what to do, sitting, sitting on your, your throne or sitting on your podium, you know, whether you're the president or the king and telling people what to do. And then it's kind of, we don't see what happens behind closed door. We don't know how you lived your life, but probably some scandal is going to come out, you know? So it's, it's a leadership that comes from a voice and it can be a tyrannical leadership because you don't have to demonstrate anything, but the new kind of leadership is a role modeling leadership where you have to be the example. Nobody's going to follow you. Nobody's going to elect you. Nobody is going to be there supporting you if you can't be an example of what your of your teachings so it's it's demonstrating and i feel like this go back to the 58 the 52 and the 9 that says you know if you have staying power for so, something that is draining you and it's not good for the whole what kind of example are you or if you're burning yourself out your fuel your energy on something that is just to serve the world but you know it's like there, there is something there where we need a coherence and there's something, you know, hopefully for me, for me, higher frequency has to do with more coherence. So we need that coherence, you know, what you say, what you do, closed doors, open doors, transparency. There is, yeah, so, so for, I feel like the collective circuitry has to include the individual and has to be good and all the lever for the individual, for the tribe, for the collective. And, and so even if we have circuitry and we're going to see kind of the preferred way of, of thinking of functioning in the different gates in the circuitry, what I feel is that it's not either or, but it's, it is inclusive of everything. It is, has, it's individual, it's tribal, it's collective, you know? So it's not just me, 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 or we, we, we. No, it's a spiral dynamic where me, of course, is like the seed that starts, but then there are more flowers in the garden and trees. And then like every spiral include what was there before the first seed so that's the way i see even even circuitry starting with individual going to travel going to collective and the collective has to include the other types of circuitry as well that's that's beautiful you're encapsulating so much of of what is present for me in this particular gate um because the 52 is actually i have I have the 52.9 channel and the 52 is also in my gene keys in my culture mm. sphere. So, um, you know, I'm at the moment, I'm going through this deep, I'm, I'm deeply looking at my vocation and of course the core wound from my Venus sequence, um, which, is also about leadership and leads into this experience of culture for me, mm -hmm. which is where this gift of restraint is absolutely required in order to manifest the form of leadership that doesn't rely upon the lower frequency shadow manifestations the leadership of dominance, the leadership of tyranny, the leadership of control. Um, when, when we're looking at, when I'm looking at restraint in my life, there's often this, for me, an internal pressure to produce the destiny that is set forth through the manifested biological form that I have, the spiritual experience that I am going through. Um, 
all of that comes from my core and my vocation. But if I react to that as if that is my environment, if I just react without restraining that reactive impulse, what I'm going to create is going to be a manifestation that comes out of fear. Mm -hmm. And so the leadership that will be engendered is a, a leadership of fear, which is absolutely not a form of leadership that is going to support the evolution of our collective society, nor is it one that's going to support my personal individual collective, as I've always been uh, almost cripplingly um, opposed to experiences of leadership through fear. Um, so when I look at the restraint and why is that a gift? Why is the ability to restrain our responses a gift? I love the, um, I love the analogy that Richard Rudd gives for this 50 second gene key that a sunflower seed and the seed of a yew tree are roughly the same size and whereas a sunflower can grow to its full height its full splendor its full expression within a single season you know a yew tree it may take several decades to reach the same size as that sunflower. But as the sunflower will pass on just after a year, and though it produces lots and lots of seeds, you know, it can continue that year after year. The yew tree, that original seeded yew tree can have that deep staying power for hundreds or maybe even thousands of years. So restraint allows for the organic sprouting of whatever seeds, whatever intentions are coming through us as an individual expression of divinity. The Gene Keys gives us that map for how does that expression happen? What is the experience? What's the ride going to be like? How are we going to move through it and how can we how can we relate with our journey in a way that is uh, going to fulfill us that's going to support us along that pathway and this particular gate right now and the shadows that are being illuminated by that gate really gives us an opportunity to transform our entire relationship to that individual uniqueness and that individual divinity that's being expressed in relationship to our environment, in relationship to the collective. Not everybody's here to be a leader. Not everybody's here to, to necessarily blaze a new pathway into new directions. However, whatever your unique gifts are, they are going to contribute to the evolution of the collective. And as long as we react to the environment of our expressive journey, our spiritual gene key pathway, our human design mechanics, However you want to define environment, as long as we respond to that environment through fear, by being repressed and, and collapsing or being reactive and frenetic, everything we create is going to be a new seed planted for more experiences to produce more fear. It is going to just be this feedback loop of lower and lower frequency. So this particular transit right now is a huge opportunity 
to transform our entire relationship to the environment of ourselves, the aura that we produce, the environment of our bodies, the environment of our mind, of our emotions, of our spirit. All of these things we can respond to in different forms. And I'm really excited about the opportunity we have to move into a higher frequency with this particular transit. <laughs> Bella, any other, what other thoughts do you have about, about this gate and, or about, you know, what, what I was just sharing, anything on your mind, because I, I just, I love your insights because I feel like I, I'm not sure which planet governs this aspect of, of your expression, but whatever it is that you come up with, all, it's never something I expect. <laughs> so, you know, like I'm thinking of like Uranus or Neptune or something, whatever is going on there, it just like, anytime I ask you, you just come up with something that's always like, ping. Oh yeah, that's right. That's what I was wanting to hear. <laughs> you know, I have Mercury in the 12th house. Ah. So there is just something with like, I'm kind of thinking outside the box, I guess. <laughs> I, I love the 12th house because that's where I, I have a bunch of stuff. Well, I have a couple of things out there that are pretty prominent for my own path. So, you know, what I thought when I heard you is that you say that you have this 52 in the culture sphere and the culture sphere is what I would call the everyday brand. It's, you know, we call it the everyday brand with Ashley because she's a brand specialist, but I would say, you know, it's your everyday keyword in a way like when you respect that in your everyday life it's going to open up for you a possibility to be prosperous in in anything you do so it's, it's a key code so i am wondering in your case what what line is your uh 52 in your culture um something's telling me it's four but i i have forgotten um let me just see if i can Grab and also it. check the seven in the vocation at the line also at the same time just that, to... that one's a six okay okay here we are um yeah so i had the four line in the culture so so it's a set my vocation is seven um with the six line and then the culture is 52 with the four line so for you, this restraint on an everyday basis in your working environment is super important. You know, you need to have your network there. You need to know, like, I'm just a phone call away or a message away and that we are meeting in this like fun connection, you know, every every Tuesday. It's but it's 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 important on an everyday basis that you respect this this um, 52 and that you see what in my network, you know, what in what I have here, do I put my fuel on? Because we don't want you to put your staying power on something that is not going to be good for you in the collective. And always with that fourth line that's transpersonal, you're, it is always, and you being a 6'2 six, a, a six as well, you're always going to feel that, you know, that transpersonal quality of, of the collective. And, so, and you have the 52 that is a collective gate and the fourth line that is the network and that then that turning like you know linking that with that pathway of growth that is from the vocation to the culture so what fuels your you know your your restraint your saying power your balancing factor with yourself and your in your network in the world is actually it's the sixth line uh, of, of the seventh. So here you, I mean, you're here to be a leader. You're here to be a role model. You are here to be that person that can that can lead uh, the army, like we say, or the 144,000 soldiers. But it comes first when you have healed that wound of separation, which goes very much together with cancer and the fear-based leaderships that you were speaking about before. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, that's a tricky one. The six line in the core one is a tricky one. And there can be some things where, you know, your six line mind in your personal, in your, in your life's work, in your evolution can like 
together with that mental line in the vocation can keep you separate from going you know there or keep you in an arrogance about this really the sixth line can be tricky in that sense it doesn't really want to go to where it hurts it prefers to find a resolution to it but it can't because it needs to go through all the lines through all the colors in order to become that that role model and there's also something you know when you look at the world and you only see division you only see discord and division. How can you then go into that 52 and feel like it's worth it to give your fuel to things, you know? That there's also that. And, and only when you overcome that, like that the, the division is not gonna keep you in fear or in inertia, is when you really truly on an everyday basis can live out that 52 that is going to be, you know, how you nurture your own life on an everyday basis and how you how you how you also you know, how that spill over on the whole. So we know from the Venus sequence, you know, that the, the core wound and the vocation that flips first, if that hasn't flipped, to really truly live your culture sphere in a, in a way that is, that is not only creating financial prosperity, but also a fulfilled life cannot really happen. And I know that you were saying, and I have that 7.6, exactly the same in my purpose. And I know it's a tricky one, you know? I know that's why I came here and embodied because that's my purpose and you have it in your core. That's the collective task that you've come here to start to, you know, disentangle. So we have that in common. And you were saying that you were, you know, just last week or the, yeah, last week you were, you were, you were grappling with it. So yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like the reason that it came up is because it's because we were going into this 52 transit and I just suddenly became aware of like, I need to look at my core. What's going on there? You know, and I looked at it and I was like, oh, the army, whenever I throw an I Ching, like the army shows up over and over and over and over again. Like if I ask, if, if I use it as an oracle and I ask some question like, um, what's the best way to share the essence of what I've come here to accomplish in the world? What do I get? The army. It just, every time it shows up. So, um, you know, I want to, you know, I, <laughs> it's interesting to look to me, of course, it's interesting to me because it's my it's my profile, right? But there's an element of interest for me around the relationship of these two things, my vocation and my culture spheres that gives some insight into this 52 transit that is occurring right now and can give any person who's watching a, just a clue about how to identify what's happening you know in today's day and age where everybody has access to all the information all the information of, of humanity is on the internet somewhere um, we can all access the same stuff and everybody is waking up and becoming more spiritually engaged than maybe ever before on a collective level at least within our recorded history that, that we have access to. And I think we have an intrinsic tendency to see shadow aspects and say, that's not me. Or we recognize the shadow aspect and go, oh, that's totally me. I'm, I'm, kind, of a, I'm kind of a mess in that area of my life, right? We either like fully embrace it or we're like, no, nah, that's not me. I've overcome that. I've, I've transcended my shadow in that way. And one of the things that strikes me about the gene keys is that the city frequency, that transcendent frequency encompasses both the shadow and the gift. It's not separate from either. It's not as if you become this like shining savior of frequency unto the world. Although ironically, that's how probably everyone would see you if you manifest as one of those city frequencies in your life. You will recognize the presence of the shadow in everything. 
you will recognize the gift of that shadow in everything. So when you experience a form of subtle discomfort around a particular, not a particular pattern of repression or, or reactiveness, but a discomfort around a, a particular quality. In my case, it's when we're looking at this, it's the gift of restraint. I'm very good at it, but there's an underlying tension where I have to say to myself, should I do this? And I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't, don't react. And that restraint happens as a process, not as an impulse mm -hmm. for me. The impulse is reactive in nature. And I have to override that with some form of mental gymnastics or emotional alchemy or something to quiet that impulse down. And what that tells me is that no matter how much of that gift frequency that I have access to, that shadow is still present. So from, you know, I have the added pressure of the army, you know, pushing me forward to, to move out of that status as a hidden leader. You know, I, I don't, when I was younger, I, I tended to run more towards the side of tyranny rather than the hidden. Once I learned the lesson of tyranny, I was like, screw it. I'm, I'm out, <laughs> you know, but it adds all this pressure to respond that requires the restraint to be a constant active process. So if you find yourself in that state of reactivity, that's where, where you have that impulse that you need to say, uh, hold on, I need to hold that in check. You know that your shadow is present. Yeah, I just wanted to say back to what you were saying about it can be for all of us, it can be valuable. And I believe when we are looking at collective circuitry, it's for all of us. And it's an improvement of how we walk together in the now, but even more so into the future. So when we look at the seven, it's part of, of collective logical circuitry. And the 52, nine is, are, are the same. So it's about human processes. And like you're saying, how can we create more coherence? How can we create something that's more in the gift frequency in how we walk? you know, and how we make those choices that are propelling us forward in a constructive way or in a not so constructive way. So I just really feel like this conversation is for all of us. And it's, yeah, it's really universal in that sense. We all have it. We are all part of the collective, no matter how much collective circuitry we have or not. We are all part of, of this, you know, that, yeah. Yes, there's, there's so much to discuss, I think, with every gate. And you know, I, I, I was excited about the connection to the adrenal system, the, the kidneys and how they function at a spiritual level within our system. But we'll have to save that maybe for the next, next go around. Maybe someday Bella will have an offshoot of the biological manifestations of, of the transits of the gene keys or, or of the rave calendar. Um, you know, maybe, maybe that'll become available as the codon rings continue to, to reveal themselves. Of course, we're coming out of gate 15, which is another, another aspect of the codon ring of seeking. So we're definitely building onto that with, with the transit that we're discussing today. And if you're, if you've been watching on Facebook, and you're excited about the possibility of transforming your frequency through a process of entrainment that allows you to gain some space to grow the awareness of the presence of shadows, of the gift within your experiences of those shadows. And maybe even 
are ready to open yourself up to the higher frequencies that become available in your evolution, just mention in the comments that, that you'd like to learn more and, and we'll get you set up so that you can um, uh, check out the membership and, and join us there. So we'll see you another time on Facebook. We'll continue with our members and, and uh, complete our transmission and alchemy of the, these lunar energy vibrations that are being reflected from the sun with our solar members. So we'll see you next time. Um, all right.